everyone. Welcome to Red Carpet With. I'm your host, Raja Azuni, back with you with a brand new episode of RCW. Our guest today is a rather interesting gentleman. Some of you may already know him as a co-founder of My Performing Arts Agency. He is also the director of Limelight Entertainment and a guitarist for a local grunge band called Primitive Leap. Well, one thing's for sure, no matter how you know him, I'm sure there's more to this man than meets the eye. So let's hear it from the strategic superhero himself, <laughs> Mr. Brian Johnson Lowe. Thank Hi, you. Hi, Brian. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Okay, first, we have to ask, strategic superhero, how did that <laughs> come about? Yeah, you know, we always wanted to give ourselves something to start a conversation with. So I think when you hand out sure. name cards, it's always the first thing they see, your name and your title. So we thought that would be the best icebreaker. Right, okay. <laughs> so, but is there anything special about the title that fits you? Yeah, I Do think... Do you I'll, like, you know? Well, I don't take off my clothes, but <laughs> I think uh, from my background, it's always been more strategy work, so... I've been tasked to, to, to do that also in my past, so it okay. requires a little bit of superhero-ness to it. it <laughs> right, okay, fair enough. So you've actually done several things in the past, but um, for the benefit of those who may not be entirely familiar, so can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and your role with my performing arts agency? Okay, well, uh, I grew up in Ipoh. Actually, I grew up in Penang, but I was born in Ipoh. Uh, I didn't spend much time in Para actually, but uh, up until 2008, I spent my entire time in Penang. Mm -hmm. And in 2008, I realized I needed to have a change. Um, I spent some of my working career working in a lot of MNCs based there. Okay. And then I moved to KL to work with a government agency. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I did a lot of work in securing uh, technology investments into Malaysia. All right. So my, my market was actually North America. So I spent a lot of time in the plane going back and forth, mm -hmm. six months out of the year. And mm -hmm. that was a very interesting time. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much where my career comes from. But I've spent a lot of my time doing in various industries. Okay. I started out as an auditor uh, from the accounts division in a bank. And then I went on to technology. Uh, I worked for Dell in, in, in Penang. And then I also did a stint in uh, a wood-based company. So I, I have a track record of jumping massively between industries, but always within uh, marketing or strategy. Right, so yeah. you did all that within a span of how many years? I think about between 10 and 15 years. 10 and 15? <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. So okay, let's talk about my performing arts agency. Mm. I think um, you've been uh, quite actively organizing uh, several events of late. Mm. Can you tell tell us about um, the nature of these events and you know what's the objective of it all? Yeah, so mm. um, I co-founded uh, my performing arts agency together with my partner, Izan Satrina. Yeah. Uh, we did this because we realized there is a transformational need in the arts and culture mm -hmm. of the country. A lot more has been done, but a lot more can be done still. Mm -hmm. uh, and we started out by disrupting the existing ways arts is actually um, handled in Malaysia. Okay. So we developed platforms such as uh, the Royal Arts Gala, mm -hmm. uh, Carnival Seni Creative Kita and Bora Arts as a way to try and bridge a gap between the uh, corporates, uh, the government agencies and also the arts. Okay. So that's pretty much why we started up MIPA. All right. Mm. But how... How are your events different from anything else you, um, anybody else would hold yeah. out there? Yeah. So I think uh, one, one good example would be the Royal Arts Gala, whereby mm -hmm. in previous times, mm -hmm. the government would just give out grants directly to the artist. Okay. Uh, there's not a lot of accountability on both parties. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the projects are actually underway, you don't know actually whether it happens or not. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things which is lost in transition. Okay. Uh, we disrupted it by, by telling the government not to give out money, but mm -hmm. instead, uh, instead leveraging on the corporates mm -hmm. to give out money right. through a fund. Right. Uh, when you go towards the corporates, they always want transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the key areas for us because we were able to provide that. Mm -hmm. And then towards the artist, um, they now ac have actual access into the fund because it's online. Mm -hmm. So what's transformational and disruptive about it is first you don't, 
you, you don't get the money from the government, you get it from the corporates. Mm -hmm. And then when you get money from the corporates, they actually sit in a committee and decide mm -hmm. who actually gets funded. Mm -hmm. So they don't just hand out the money. They sit in a committee called the Royal Arts mm -hmm. Gala Fund, mm -hmm. and then they decide who gets funded. All right. And this whole process takes about three to six months as opposed to one year previously. Mm -hmm. so okay. Yeah. And how successful have you been? I think in the first year when we started my part, 2012, May, uh, we were tasked to actually launch the first Royal Arts Gala in December. So apart from dealing with the fact of starting up a company, mm -hmm. you know, registering, getting your office, hiring people, mm -hmm. we had to stage the first Royal Arts Gala in the presence of the King and Queen of Malaysia. Uh, and, and we did that. Um, and we raised 760000 somehow in just six months. So mm. that was pretty amazing. Quite remarkable, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so now you're also the director of Limelight Entertainment. So tell us about your role in that. Yeah, so we started Limelight uh, Entertainment, me and Izan, uh, because we wanted to have a production entity. Uh, my performing arts agency is more about arts advocacy. Mm -hmm. It's about lobbying with the government for policy change, for mm -hmm. tax exemptions and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But we didn't want to, to confuse our audience and dilute our brand. Mm -hmm. So we created an entity to make sure that all commercial and production stuff mm -hmm. stays out of MIPA. So that's why Limelight Entertainment came about early this year. Right, okay. Mm. So uh, you'll be producing... Um, a very, very uh, much looked forward to show, I believe, <laughs> sometime very, very soon, and it's called License to Thrill, a Bond Concert. Yeah. Okay, so tell us uh, more about that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be happening fairly soon, uh, 14th to 16th uh, November mm -hmm. at Istana Budaya. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's going to be four shows, Friday, 8.30pm, uh, Saturday, 3pm and 8.30pm, and Sunday, 3pm. So um, we're having... We were very fortunate to actually have the lead star of Phantom of the Opera, David Shannon, mm -hmm. who will be here, mm -hmm. along with the lead star of Les Miserables, uh, Simon Bailey. Right. Both are huge West End stars. Mm -hmm. And they will be here actually to perform the classics of the James Bond movie. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, I think we have to take a short break. Sure. So we'll be back with Red Carpet With right after this. Thank you. Welcome back to Red Carpet With. Uh, today we're chatting with co-founder of My Performing Arts Agency and director of Limelight Entertainment, Mr. Brian Lowe. Okay, Brian, just before the break, uh, we touched on License to Thrill, a Bond concert that's set to hit the local stage very, very soon. Yeah. And you're the executive producer. So tell us, how did Limelight get the idea for something like this? Um, well, we wanted to stage a very impactful first production. And when we looked for some form of content, both locally and internationally, uh, that can put not only a very thrilling mm -hmm. uh, sort of a show on, but also has elements that can relate to a lot of people within a long span of generation. Mm -hmm. um, so when we looked for something to do, we very quickly realized that um, the Ian Fleming books and the movies that came along with it was one of the very few movies that had a very long span from 1962 till 2012 mm -hmm. and 23 movies in between. And when you watch uh, a Bond movie, you instantly can relate to the fact that it's always either very fast-paced or action-based mm -hmm. or there's always very interesting characters involved and surely a very evil villain. <laughs> but I think for us, we wanted to do it because uh, the fact that it relates to a lot of people within that generation. Anyone from 20 to 60 can come and watch a James Bond movie. Mm -hmm. Therefore, anyone from that age can also come and watch License to Thrill. So I think that was the first reason why we chose uh, okay. License to Thrill. Yeah. All right. So are you a James Bond fan yourself? Yes, I am. Who's your favorite <laughs> Bond and I, why? Well, this is going to be controversial because... Every time I say it, then somebody will say, no, they have their own yeah, uh, sure. yes. uh, preference. But, but, mine, <laughs> but mine is Daniel Craig because I think he's the most realistic James Bond of you all. You think? Yeah. Okay. Maybe you prefer Sean Connery. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
in not too many words, <laughs> okay? So, which is your favorite Bond theme song? Ooh, I have quite a few of them, but I would say You Know My Name is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's sung by one of my favorite singers of all time, Chris Cornell. Mm -hmm. And also, it's one of those uh, songs whereby he actually said, Casino Royale doesn't really make a nice name for a title, so okay. I'm just going to make yeah, another song, sure. and he did. <laughs> okay, all right. You know? Okay. So, but you're a musician <coughs> yourself, so will you be part of the musical ensemble? Will you be contributing to that? Uh, no, I will not. I leave it <laughs> in the hands of very good professionals, such as Z1, uh, our, our music director. Yeah. Okay, all right. And the director is Melissa uh, Teo? Melissa Teo, yes. Okay, tell us about the production team. So, the production team is actually... Um, comprised of people who have very good experience in the production world. Uh, mm -hmm. Melissa Teo was trained in the US. Mm -hmm. She's worked on productions such as uh, Evita, The King and I, to name a few, <coughs> and a lot of the local shows here. Z1 is a Berkeley College of Music graduate, mm -hmm. and she has done most, if not all, of the music uh, directing for Malaysia's TV-based shows, such as Academy Fantasia, Malaysian Idol, along with some of the biggest concerts, um, you know, Awi, uh, Ella, and mm -hmm. all those concerts in Istana Budaya. So, very experienced. Uh, our choreographer is actually Yunus, Muhammad Yunus, mm -hmm. who is a graduate from Aswara. Okay. So, these three people comprise the main production team. Right, mm. okay. So... Tell, tell us now <coughs> about your choice of performers. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, well, we had looked for two international stars mm -hmm. and three local stars. And we were very bold to reach out to people in West End. So we were very fortunate and humbled that David Shannon and Simon Bailey actually agreed to come and perform for us. They're both big stars in West End London, both mm -hmm. who have done the biggest shows on us on earth, such as Phantom of the Opera and Les Miserables. Sure. Uh, in Malaysia, I had the fortunate ability to choose who I wanted All right. to sing. So my first choice was actually Salamia Hassan, mm -hmm. because she uh, there's nobody else like her in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. She's a gem to work with. She's really nice. Yeah. And she actually reminds me of Shirley Bassey. I was just about to say so that. So you wanted a Shirley Bassey in the team, <coughs> yeah, I'm sure. As soon as I thought about the concept, it was like Shirley Bassey, and then it just said, Salam Ya Hasan. It w didn't require much thinking. And to my delight, she said yes. Sure. Without actually knowing who I am. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jacqueline Victor was the second choice. And she needs no introduction. She's huge in Malaysia and very contemporary. But for our third singer, we were finding it a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to have an audition. <coughs> and we went through a string of them. Mm -hmm. And in the end, Nikki Palikat came and sang. And what got us really fascinated is that she sang Skyfall sitting down. Really? Yeah. So we all had to mm -hmm. compose, keep our composure uh, during the audition. But as soon as she left, it was like, OK, end of auditions. <laughs> we have her. We found her. Yeah. So, but how long has rehearsals started? I mean, I'm sure the local performers <coughs> have started something. Yeah. yeah, they have been singing on their own so far. Uh, tell me, I mean, obviously, this is the <coughs> first production from Limelight Entertainment, right? Yeah. So, in your opinion, what does it take to put on a world-class performance? Oh, it's actually a very challenging thing to do. Um, you have to pick the right content to start with. And then you have to pick the right team people who are very capable and, and, and is able to translate your vision. Mm -hmm. And then you have to find the ancillary teams, the production teams. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to go through countless amounts of meetings to make sure that the creative uh, aspect is translated. Only after that point can you really start to see whether your show is making sense. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, for the first three to six months, you're actually working very fluidly. So you have an idea of what you want, mm -hmm. but your final product may be something completely different mm -hmm. because the director has her own vision, the music director has their own visions on how to, tr to take your idea mm -hmm. and make it much better. Okay. So it's an interesting process. It doesn't always end how you think it will. So as an executive producer for me, 
I'm also still waiting to see how it'll turn out as well. Sure. Okay. <coughs> so are you enjoying what you're doing? It's a very fascinating uh, experience so far, mm -hmm. and I'm really enjoying it. How do you compare this to the work that you've done before in the corporate world? <laughs> well, the corporate world is completely different. I think I'm sure. uh, it, uh, it's just, um, I wouldn't say bureaucratic, bureaucratic but mm -hmm. I think um, you are mostly hired to do your role, and you do your role well, mm -hmm. and you excel at doing it. But being in the production world, you need to, to create your world. Yes, so that's the primary difference. You create your world and then you bring everyone into it mm -hmm. and then you make sure they all buy into it and mm -hmm. then they execute your vision for you. That's the main difference, I think. So it took me a while to transition to that. I was always somewhat used to waiting for instructions or at least reading something before knowing what I should do. Mm -hmm. But now I have to be that person. Right. You know? So it's an interesting transition for me. Sure, okay. So what can the audience expect from this show? Well, it's not going to be a straightforward concert, I can tell you that. It's going to be more of theatrics based. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be a 17-piece orchestra on stage. Okay. And um, there's going to be some moments where some reenactment re may happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lights and sound visual feast. Mm -hmm. And overall, in that hour and a half, I think we will take you through a journey of all the best Bond classic songs. Mm. So that's what you can expect. <laughs> okay, so what would you like to say to the EBN viewers out there on why <coughs> they should go watch License to Thrill, a Bond concert? Well, I think all of you should just come and watch the License to Thrill, a Bond concert showcase. And because this is the Southeast Asian premiere of the show, you wouldn't want to miss it before we take it to other countries. So come and watch it, uh, 14th to 16th November at Istana Budaya. All right, so you heard it, folks. Okay, catch License to Thrill, a Bond concert at Panggung Sari, Istana Budaya from November 14 to 16. So, Brian, thank you very much for coming to the show and spending some time with us. It's been great having you on. And that's all the time that we have for the show today. For the latest updates, go to redcarpet.net.my and don't forget to catch Red Carpet with on ABN Channel 201 as we bring you interesting interviews with celebrities every week. Till next time. Bye. Just next in line.